Hello and welcome. This time we are talking about analog to digital conversion. So analog to digital conversion is always needed if there is some analog value from a measurement or something like this and I want to get this in digital form, in form of a number, so that I can calculate with it or something like this. Yeah. Analog digital converters are widely used, yeah. usually in SPS and PLCs, SPS is the German abbreviation, Speicherprogrammierbare Steuerung or PLC, Programmable Logic Controller. Uh, in PLCs, well, it's just, it's sitting in there. Yeah? Even in our little Arduinos we used, yeah, there is an analog digital converter, 10 bit analog digital converter. So, you see, it's common technique. There are different methods of analog digital conversion. Okay? Quite a number of methods. Yeah? Some are expensive, some are cheap, some are fast, some are slower. Okay? So this is where the differences are. Yeah? Usually on the input of the digital converter, of the analog digital converter, there is an analog signal. And this analog signal, this is changing. Yeah? So we need something fixing this signal because the conversion needs a little bit time afterwards. Yeah? And we cannot deal, usually we cannot deal with changing analog values. We need to fix this analog value, yeah? then make the conversion and then get the next analog value. Release this fix and get the next and then do the conversion again. Okay? Conversion takes simply some time. Why? We will see. So, uh, this fixing, yeah, this analog fixes, yeah, they are quite, their, their money is running in. Okay? They are quite expensive. Yeah? Especially if they have to have a high accuracy when we have a high resolution. Yeah. then this element is where the money really is running to. Uh, well, this thing where the money is running to yeah, can be avoided if we can directly produce a digital value at the measurement. Yeah. This is sometimes possible. Then it's worth to think about it. Digital value at measurement is, for instance, if you want to know how many rotations a shaft has, yeah, we can put on a generator, yeah, which will produce a, a voltage level which is high or low according to the rotation. Yeah, this would be analog measurement, or we can place a dot on it, yeah, and simply count how often the dot has passed over the last second. Yeah? Then I already have a number. Okay? And this is already digital measurement. So it might be possible. Yeah? However, in quite a lot of cases, digital measurements are, have, are not used. So we need to do this conversion. And I show you now one basic working principle of quite a lot of uh, analog digital converters, yeah? how this is working. So usually we have some sort of counter. Okay. So there is a counter. It's maybe an up or down counter or it's a counter. And over a certain period of time, this counter, there is an impulse generator somewhere. Yeah. So here, there's an impulse generator, which is producing impulses yeah, with a certain rate. And here, I need somehow an element, yeah, how this is 
done, we will see. So here we need some somewhere an element which will switch this on or open this. Huh? And if I then can manage that this counter value is reflecting the analog value, yeah, because if it's a high analog value, the counter shall count long time. Yeah, if it's a low analog value, the counter shall count not that long. So the counter value, if the frequency is fixed, will reflect the analog value. Okay, so the counter is usually the base part yeah, of an analog digital converter. If the counter then finished counting, yeah, we will transfer its content into a memory. So there is a memory. And the content of the counter will be transferred into this memory once the counter has been finished counting. Yeah? And this is what takes time. The counter must count until a certain level, reflecting the analog value, and then the counter value will be copied into the memory. And from the memory, we can read the value, and that's our value. Okay, so this is the output here. That's our value. Yeah? And there might be also somewhere a uh, display. Hmm? Also getting data from the memory. So as long as the counter is counting, I see in the memory on the output on the, on the output and on the display, I see the last trans converted thing. Yeah? This part here, and also the input the, the impulse generator, they are very usual in different type of of uh, analog digital converters. How this counter is switched and if it shall count up or count down, yeah? I will explain at the specific types. Yeah? But this is a very usual, usual thing. Yeah. And of course, the width of the counter, how many bits there is, this is the resolution of the analog digital converter. Yeah? The only thing which needs them to fit is the impulse rate and the maximum number to count. That's it. So, that's it for the base of analog digital converters. Our first analog digital converter, how this is working, will be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.